why the narcissist is rotting. What's the definition of to rot, rotting? It's to undergo decomposition from the action of bacteria or fungi, to become unsound or weak, to go to ruin, to become morally corrupt. Now, of course, the narcissist is not rotting in the physical sense, undergoing decomposition from the action of bacteria or fungi, unless, of course, the narcissist has happened to overdose in their squalid bedsit and is left unnoticed. Or perhaps the narcissist was mauled by a bear in the wilderness and killed the corpse and left to succumb to the process of decomposition. It is not a physical decomposition. So what do I mean when I state that the narcissist is rotting? This is a process which occurs with regard to certain narcissists, as there is a slow, steady descent into decay. It is the decay of the construct. It is not a fuel crisis. A fuel crisis is much faster, more immediate, far more dramatic. That is where there is a sudden cessation of all fuel provision or substantial fuel provision. For example, the escape of the intimate partner primary source from a middle lesser narcissist or a middle middle range narcissist. That individual being the main provider of the prime aims, including fuel, their departure could rip out 70 to 90% of the fuel provision of that narcissist, plunging the narcissist into a position of fuel crisis, with the narcissism clamouring in response to shift to secondary and tertiary, combined known as the supplementary sources of fuel, in order to protect the existence of the construct for that narcissist. The situation of rotting is not a fuel crisis. The rot is much slower. This is where there is a steady erosion of the provision of fuel to the narcissist over time. A steady decline in the level of fuel that is provided to the particular narcissist as a consequence of an adjustment caused by those in the fuel matrix and the composition of the fuel matrix itself, with the narcissist unable to do anything meaningful with regard to correcting those adjustments. Think of it like an individual that is in a hospital bed requiring oxygen to breathe. If the oxygen is shut off, there is an immediate danger of death, heart attack, brain damage, akin to the sudden dramatic effects of a fuel crisis. With regard to the rotting, this is more akin to slowly turning down the dial so that less oxygen is coming through, occasionally treading on the pipe so there is a temporary cessation maybe only a few seconds. But the overall impact of this is that the fuel provision is on a downward trajectory. And this is what causes the rotting of the narcissist. Fuel powers the narcissist and keeps the construct together. It is the glue which maintains the construct, which is the false self, what the outside world sees with regard to the narcissist. This construct serves two purposes, as I've explained elsewhere. It is used to draw more people to the narcissist, if you like, the shiny, glittering outside part of it, and it is a prison to keep the chasm of the creature at bay. As the narcissist rots, as this construct falls apart, little by little, 
A splinter here falls away. A crack forms in a plate of the construct there. A fracture occurs somewhere else. A shard topples away from it. As the fuel comes down, that glue that keeps the construct together is being eroded, so the construct is slowly, not dramatically, slowly falling apart. What causes this? Two aspects. First of all, there is an alteration in the fuel matrix so that the narcissist fuel matrix is getting smaller. So, for example, there is a loss of non-intimate secondary sources. This might be occasioned by the fact that individuals have just drifted away from the narcissist. Friends have moved to another part of the country, are busy with their own families, busy with their jobs, and aren't in his contact with the narcissist as much. Some members of the fuel matrix, of course, die, and therefore are no longer part of it. Others may consciously decide to remove themselves from interaction with the narcissist, possibly because they realise what they're dealing with and they are imposing a no-contact regime. In other instances, simply because they find the narcissist too difficult to deal with, unpleasant, downright awful, and therefore, indignantly, they decide to have nothing more to do with them. It might be that the narcissist, for instance, no longer works, either been made redundant, fired, or retired, and therefore doesn't have access to colleagues who would be otherwise non-intimate secondary sources. There isn't access to customers or clients removing secondary tertiary sources from the fuel matrix. It might be that the narcissist is bed-bound or confined to home in some way, perhaps because of injury or illness, meaning it is harder to go out and meet people generally, and there is a greater reliance upon technology. And of course, the largest amount of fuel that is provided is when we are proximate to you, when we are next to you. And if we are only able to, say, correspond with somebody through text messages, yes, we're still receiving fuel, but it is a much smaller amount than compared to being with you, and therefore that impacts. So it may well be that the narcissist loses people from the fuel matrix as a consequence of people consciously removing themselves from the fuel matrix, deciding that they no longer want to be part of the life of the narcissist, naturally just moving away and drifting apart, the consequence of the narcissist being removed from people through the loss of employment, retirement, illness or injury. It also occurs as a consequence of a decreasing fuel provision by the members of the fuel matrix that remain within it. Friends visit less often, family members visit less often, if at all, perhaps telephoning, rather than coming in person. The long-suffering intimate partner primary source has not escaped, but, to an extent inured to the behaviours of the narcissist, doesn't react to the tantrums and the jibes and the provocations in the way that he or she once did, and they just meet it with a roll of the eyes and a shrug and move away from the ranting individual. They don't provide the fuel in the way that they once did. It might be also that there is no scope for intimate partner secondary source activity other than perhaps online because the narcissist is unable to get out and about, either at all or requiring assistance, which of course means that secret trysts become extremely difficult if you have a carer with you. Accordingly, this steady erosion of the constitution of the fuel matrix combined with reduced fuel provision by those remaining in it result in a depleted supply of fuel to the narcissist. And this results in the construct starting to fall apart and the narcissist rotting. In some instances, the narcissism has had to alter sit the situation so that the narcissist can't disengage because it would be too difficult in terms of energy and effort 
to go and find another intimate partner primary source, and therefore they remain with the current one, who, whilst not providing huge amounts of fuel, is still providing some fuel. And also, there is often a trade-off with regard to fuel provision versus residual benefits. When younger and sprightlier, running around town, the narcissist is not as concerned by the provision of the residual benefits. He can go and do his own shopping, he can do his own laundry, he can attend to himself. Of course, many narcissists won't because of their sense of entitlement, but if they have to, they can do. The option is there, and therefore it matters not to them that they obtain huge amounts of fuel from people by provoking them, running the risk of them departing, because they can go and readily find somebody else, and the loss of that individual with regard to residual benefits isn't so horrendous. But with infirmity, with advanced age, with injury and ill health, for some narcissists, not all, that means that the necessity of that carer, usually the intimate part of primary source, becomes increased. The person providing the medication, the person changing the laundry, the bed sheets, doing the sponge bath, wiping the bottom of the narcissist, whatever it might be, the necessity of that carer, the provider of meals and other attendant services, outweighs the drop in fuel provision. The narcissism needs the narcissist to keep that person in place because the provision of the residual benefits becomes more important than usual and the trade-off is a reduction in fuel and thus the decay, the rotting, starts or continues. As the narcissist rots and the construct slowly starts to fall apart, not only does it become more and more difficult for the narcissist to attract people towards them to gain more fuel, but the presence of the chasm the creature becomes felt for these particular narcissists. The restlessness increases. The sense of impending doom is a more daily occurrence. They don't know what it is, because the narcissists that rot are the unaware ones, not the aware ones. The aware greaters and the ultra will be unaffected by this, because their fuel matrices are so extensive and they retain the capability as a consequence of a variety of factors which I need not go into in today to shift the fuel matrix around so that fuel levels will always remain at a very high level. But those particular unaware narcissists that are affected by this, and I shall tell you shortly which ones those are, those are the ones which feel the presence of the creature although they don't know what it is. They feel the emptiness, a palpable sense of dread, unease, building day by day. It manifests in them becoming more irascible characters, which of course become self-defeating. The more that they rant, the more that people pull away from them, and the decay can increase and accelerate. They sit and sulk, but nobody cares any longer, having endured decades of this behaviour. Invariably, this is experienced by those narcissists which are in advanced ages or have suffered some kind of illness or injury, rendering their capability to draw fuel problematic, for reasons that I explained earlier in this video. Which narcissists, then, are affected most by this? Well, most commonly, it occurs with the lower lesser, the middle lesser, the upper lesser type B, and the lower mid-ranger. Why? This is because they are the more aggressive narcissists. Upper mid-range can be aggressive, lower greater can be aggressive, but they are more polished individuals with greater access to larger fuel matrices, so they are far, far, far less likely to ever suffer this fate. The lower lesser and the middle lesser are affected by the fact that they tend to have small fuel matrices to begin with, and because of their aggression, they will drive people away from them who may, they may, in advanced years, be less able to replace. But when they were younger and more mobile, it didn't matter. They could cycle the friends and it wasn't an issue. Lose a friend, replace the friend. It wasn't an issue for them. But as they get older and with infirmity and injury and ill health, it becomes more difficult for them to replace the individuals that they've chased away, yet their aggression remains. 
And a combination of their regression and a small fume matrix means that lower lessers and middle lessers experience this tortuous, slow decline, the rotting, the greatest. Upper lesser type B can also experience this. They tend to have larger fuel matrices, but the difficulty they have is that they are such irascible characters because they're bullies that they drive people away from them. They may, because often they tend to be financially successful and quite powerful, see off the rotting as a consequence of being able to draw new people in, basically paying individuals to pay, provide them with fuel. Not specifically, of course, because they don't know what they are, but that is the net effect. But nevertheless, certain upper lesser type Bs who may not be wholly successful, or even if they are, such as their level of aggression, that they dismantle their own fuel matrices as a consequence of the behaviour towards those individuals, driving family away, losing friends, colleagues no longer interested in dealing with them, frightened of the individual. Lower mid-rangers, although a cowardly mid-ranger, still have an aggressive element to them because they're an amalgam of lesser and mid-range. And it is these four subschools where the rotting of the narcissist is most likely to be witnessed, not always, but where the situations exist that I have described in this video, they are the ones that start to rot. They are the ones whose fuel provision doesn't dramatically drop off, although in certain instances that might happen, but if it does not, they are the ones that are more likely to suffer this steady downward trajectory of the provision of fuel, an incremental basis on a week-by-month basis, resulting in the construct slowly falling apart, like a decaying building, and with all the consequential problems for the narcissist that arise from the demise of their construct. I'm H.G. Tudor. Do subscribe to my work. Do tell other people about it. It's hugely effective and rivaled in its insight and benefits many, many people. And as always, like the video so that more people are able to see it. Your cooperation in that regard is appreciated. Thank you for listening.